Okay, I admit, the idea sounds terrific. Put up a box, put a lure inside of it, and automatically 10,000 bees and a queen will fly in here. And the best part, those bees are absolutely free. But this is probably not the best idea for most beginning beekeepers. And I wanna to talk to you about why I think it's better to go with the predictable route if you're brand new to beekeeping. Hi, my name is Ray. I'm a certified master beekeeper. And I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about why I think for most beekeepers, predictability is more important than trying to save some money when it comes to your first bees that you might get as a beginning beekeeper. Now I know there's this romanticized idea that you can just put a swarm trap, kind of like this swarm trap, up in a tree when you wanna start beekeeping and that bees are going to fly in here and it's going to save you a lot of money. As a matter of fact, there's some people out there that would even say, you're wasting your money if you're buying bees. You don't know who you're buying from. You can get bees for free. And it is true. And I am actually all for you catching swarms if you can. But there's some factors I don't think that a lot of beginning beekeepers actually think about when it comes to their first hives. And so I wanna talk a little bit about that today with you because I'm not sure that catching a swarm is your best first option, but it might be a good second option, backup option for sure. I can't tell you how many times I've had beekeepers try to take this route. They say, yeah, I'm gonna put up a swarm trap and I'm gonna catch some bees because I don't wanna spend money on bees. I don't know if they're gonna live. I don't know if I'm gonna like taking care of bees, et cetera. And they put a swarm trap up and they wait. They wait for year one, they wait for year two. I know one guy, I think he's waited five or six years for his first swarm to come and eventually he gave up and he bought bees. Because there's a lot of factors that really go into a swarm actually flying into this trap. It's not a guaranteed thing. I only caught one swarm this past year in my swarm trap. Now I did get some calls for some other swarms that were in trees, for example, or even in some walls of people's houses. But as far as being able to catch bees in my own swarm trap, well, that's not as guaranteed as you might think. There are several factors that go into this. For example, for you to catch a swarm in your swarm trap, there have to be some bees in your area that are looking to swarm and they have to choose your trap. So when a hive swarms, what it's basically doing is it's reproducing. Half of the colony leaves with the old queen. They usually fly into a tree or a branch within 100 yards of the hive while the scout bees go in the area and try to find a permanent location, a home. Now what you wanna have happen is you want them to choose your swarm box. But for that to happen, you have to be within range of some bees that are looking for that and the scout bees have to make a decision that your swarm box is the best place for them to actually go. In some parts of the country, that's really not a problem because there are an abundance of bees in the area and there might be some good chances of you catching swarms. But just be careful. There are some people I've seen, even on YouTube, that make it sound like you just put a swarm trap out and then your bees are gonna fly in there. And that might be true for them where they live. But if there's no bees within 20 miles of where you're at or even 10 miles, um, the chance of you getting a swarm is very low. And here's the reason why. Bees typically will fly a maximum of about three miles from their original location to find another location to live in when they swarm. But if there's no bees in that three mile radius, the chance of them choosing your hive at four or five or six or 10 miles away is very low or even down to zero. So you've really got to factor into this whole equation. Are swarms going to be available for you? But there's a couple of other things that I want to point out to you about why swarms may not be the best thing for beginning beekeepers. And let's talk about a couple of these. First of all, I know there's some people out there that say you're wasting your money if you buy bees because the bees that you buy are not going to be able to survive the winter. But if you catch a swarm, then the bees are going to survive the winter because they're from local stock. And <laughs> this is really not thought through all that well. I'm not trying to be critical of anybody else. That's not my point. But I want to make sure that we're thinking this thing through. What is a swarm? Well, a swarm is a colony that has divided into two colonies which is the same thing that a local beekeeper does when it makes a split. It takes one colony and it splits it into two. But there's some advantages to what the beekeeper does when he splits a hive for you. And the biggest advantage that I wanna point out to you is genetics. Many beekeepers are breeding their bees for gentleness and production, whereas the swarm that you might get may not be. And there's some research that shows that bees that swarm more are those that have hotter temperaments as far as hive management. But another advantage 
to why buying bees might be better for you as a beginning beekeeper is in regard to the queen. Now think about it with me. When a hive swarms, the old queen leaves with the adult bees and they leave either a virgin queen or a queen cell that is going to become their new queen. And so they're going to reproduce with a new young vibrant queen while the old queen leaves. You don't know how old your queen is when she flies into here. But when you buy bees, at least if you're buying from a reputable person, a local beekeeper, if you ask the right questions, you're buying a split that has been given a first year queen, a newly mated queen, typically only a few months old, have just started laying eggs at the prime of her season. And so you have an advantage right there in buying bees of predictability for you as a new beekeeper, that the queen you're getting is going to have a longer lifespan than the queen that you have here. When the hive swarms, you don't know if she's at the end of her laying cycle, if she's in the first year, if she's a second year, third year queen, you don't know how old she is. And for a beginning beekeeper, that can be really hard to discern. Again, I wanna just repeat myself, I'm not against you catching swarms. I think you should put a swarm trap up. I think every beekeeper should have a swarm trap up, especially during swarm season. I'm not against that at all, but let that be some additional hives that you get for free, but not your primary method when you're just getting started. The predictability is very valuable to you as a beekeeper. When you Now, let's move on and talk about this even a little bit more. A lot of people say, well, I want to catch bees because those are feral bees or those are survivalist bees that have made it. But that's actually may not be true at all. Remember, the bees that we raise in the United States, for example, are not native to the Americas at all. They were actually brought over here. The earliest record that we have that they were brought over from Europe was in 1622. This is not their native habitat at all. Yes, there are bees that live independent from management, but the other side of that whole argument is this, is that your bees that you caught probably came from somebody else's hive that's near you, not a swarm that happened from hives that were living in a tree. Because there are just mathematically more bees that are being kept and managed by beekeepers than there are bees that are living in um, feral situations. And so just because you caught a swarm it doesn't necessarily mean that they were survivalist bees that have been living in a tree and now split into two colonies. Yes, it could be the case, absolutely, but it doesn't mean necessarily that they are just because they flew into your swarm box. They actually might be from your neighbors three doors down the road that has uh, five or six hives and one of those left. So don't miss make the assumption that because you're catching a swarm that they're gonna somehow be a stronger breed of bee because they're survivalists or because they're feral. They actually might be infested with mites or be carrying foul brood disease or bacteria with them. And so you don't really know what you're getting. It doesn't mean that they're going to be ridden with mites. It doesn't mean that they're going to be carrying foul brood with them. They may be just as fine as a beekeeper that split the hives um, intentionally in an apiary. But I just don't want you to assume that because you caught a swarm that those bees are somehow going to be necessarily stronger than what the beekeeper does. Most beekeepers that sell splits or sell nucleuses of hives, make sure that those hives have low mite counts. They've been treating their mites, I'm sorry, they've been treating their hives for mites over the course of the last uh, period of time. And most beekeepers wanna make sure that they sell you a good quality product of bees that are not already infested with mites. And yes, every beekeeper is going to have to fight mites, absolutely, um, whether you get them from a reputable beekeeper or not. Just because you buy them from a reputable beekeeper does not mean that you're going to be exempt from mites. It's just part of keeping bees today. Another reason why I recommend that you start with a nucleus of bees or a package. I have a whole nother video, by the way, on the differences between nucleuses and packages. You might wanna to refer to that video. There's advantages to both of them, but for the new beekeeper, I tend to recommend a nucleus if you can afford it. But that aside, let me get back on topic here. To catch a swarm, you need specialized gear. You need a swarm box that is hung at the proper height and that it has the proper lure inside of it and is placed in a proper place, etc. And there's a lot of research that's available to try to help you with that. And again, I'm all for you doing that. I'm not against that in any way, shape or form. Um, but for the beginning beekeeper, sometimes just 
taking care of the basic equipment rather than the specialized equipment is all that really you want to handle as you're getting started. Another reason why I suggest that you start with a nucleus is this. Your nuke is going to be available um, possibly earlier and in a stronger form than your swarm is going to be. Now, let me kind of talk this out with you a little bit because I want to make sure you understand what I'm saying and, and, and what, not what I'm saying. When you buy a nuke, let's just use a random date. Let's say you buy a nuke on April 1st. That hive is going to have four frames of comb at least. Sometimes nucleus providers have all five frames drawn out. You're going to have a mated queen. You're going to have brood in all stages. You're going to have honey and pollen resources all inside of that little five frame nuke. So that hive is already established. It's like a little mini functioning colony that's reproducing and the uh, whole system is, is on go and there's resources and there's honey, et cetera. They've drawn out wax. That's a huge advantage. It takes about eight pounds of honey to make one pound of wax. When you catch a swarm, you're starting at basically ground zero. And if you catch a swarm on April 1st, it's going to take you Mm, I don't know, at least a month, I would say four weeks at a minimum, if everything goes well, for that swarm to kind of get to the same place as your nucleus that you bought on April 1st. Because that hive needs to draw out comb if you don't already have drawn comb, that queen needs to start laying. Then it's a three week process until that first brood actually hatches and the hive is not starting with resources of honey and pollen, et cetera. I'm talking about the swarm. And so all of that still has to take place. And so by the time all that takes place, you've missed four weeks of the nectar flow with your swarm. And so, yeah, you can make a swarm survive and you can help feed it. And there's things that you can do to make it work, for example. But for a new beekeeper, I suggest go with the predictability when you're just getting started of a mini hive that is already established. And then there's another factor that we need to talk about, and that's the abscond factor. When you catch a swarm, those bees are in swarm mode. And just because you take them out of this box and you put them into a regular hive like is here, I don't think it's on camera, but a regular hive like this hive right here, it doesn't mean that they're gonna stay there. Sometimes they're just like, yeah, we don't really like the new home you've given us. And although it's not difficult at all to move the bees from the swarm box to the hive, if you're a new beekeeper, yeah, it definitely can be intimidating. And there's a couple of things you got to make sure you get right, especially in regard to the queen. And then there's the whole, are you going to be ready for it factor. When you buy a nuke, it's predictable. You know it's going to be available on such and such a date. And if all things are equal and the weather cooperates, it, you can pick up your nuke and be prepared to really get your beekeeping journey started. A swarm, you don't know actually when it's going to happen, if it's going to happen at all for you. And so there's the whole predictability, like when you're getting started, I think it's very important that you be predictable. So when should you catch a swarm? Hey, catch one whenever you want. You see one in the tree, be prepared. Carry, um, let me grab one here. Carry a nuke box, a plastic nuke box like this in the back of your car. Put a couple of frames of uh, comb inside of here. And if you see a swarm hanging from a tree or your neighbor says, hey, I heard you're taking up beekeeping. I've got a swarm in my tree. Go and grab it and get it started. There's a lot of learning that can take place. I try to catch all the swarms that I possibly can. I love free bees. We all love free bees. So yes, and if you want to set up a swarm box right from the beginning, I say go for it. Absolutely. But your first year as beekeepers needs to be about learning and establishing uh, your hive and learning how to inspect and learning how the whole hive works, etc. And so I would say to those people who say you're wasting money if you're buying bees, like they're not going to survive. No, I wouldn't say that that's necessarily true. If you buy bees from a reputable local beekeeper, you have a really good chance that your bees are going to do just as well as his bees are. But again, the big advantage, you're going to get that younger queen. You're going to get an established hive. You're going to have brood in there already. You're going to get a better start. The predictability for you is really worth the extra money. Now, you say, Ray, should I not do this at all? Should I just really, I can't afford a nuke? Well, okay, first of all, beekeeping is expensive. I just, there's just no way around that. But I would say, if you want to try this, there's nothing wrong with it. But I think I'm just kind of reacting to 
some things that I see that says like, you're wasting your money, you're doing a stupid thing, you're making a bad decision as a beekeeper if you buy a nucleus of bees. And I would say, no, I don't think that's necessarily true. A swarm is good and I'm all for them, but just keep in mind that the predictability factor is going to give you a better start as you get started with keeping bees in your new journey. Hey, this is Ray. Thanks for joining me today. If you have some comments, suggestions, put them down below. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you think, hey, buying nucleuses, I've never buy a nuke in my life. All I want to do is catch swarms. And maybe you feel that way. Put it down there. I'd love to hear what you have to say as well. Share your experience. And if you have not hit like and subscribe, please do so. I'd love to have you join me on the next video, which I will see you next week. God bless. Take care.